Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the PDHP Core 1 um, in the health priorities in Australia. Uh, the action area that I'm going to be talking about, uh, the priority area that is, is the growing and aging population. Now I recently had to do this for an assessment task, so this is all fresh in my head and I just thought that I'd help everyone else out by putting it up in a video. First off, I found this really useful. It's from ACPA, NSW, and what they've done is they've put this entire part of the syllabus in a nice little diagram. So what we're essentially looking at is the growing and aging population. And from the growing and aging population, you can get something like healthy aging, which is a process. And there are challenges, uh, and three to be precise. The first challenge being increased population living with chronic disease and disability. Now, does chronic means lifelong. So if you don't know what chronic means, it means lifelong. I'll just put that here. Perfect. And disease and disability, uh, you've been studying that for a while. So chronic disease would include something like diabetes, CVD, and something like cancer. Okay, so let's go on to the next thing. So from this increased population living with uh, chronic disease and disability, it, it derives from the growing and aging population. Remember, this is our main thing we need to lead back to, and it's the growing and aging population. The next thing we'll have to study is the demand for health services and workforce shortages. So what challenge does this growing and aging population impose on this? And when you look at this, you go into the Learn 2's on the syllabus, which pretty much say the impact on the health system and the services, and the impact on the health service workforce. And essentially with these two, you can answer any question related to this, uh, which comes from the growing and aging population. And lastly, you have the availability of carers and volunteers, which impact on the carers of the elderly and impact on volunteer organizations. Perfect. Now let's go to the next part. So these three uh, things that I've explained are the challenges associated with the growing and aging population. And healthy aging is separate. It's just a, it's a process which can help aid the growing and aging populations of Australia. So now I'm going to show you a typical... Uh, question that might be asked in the HSC. Explain the benefits of healthy aging for the individual and community. Essentially, this would be something like five marks, and we're just going to go quickly through it. So, in healthy aging, uh, we can define it as the ongoing activities and behaviors that people undertake as they age to reduce the risk of illness and disease uh, and increase their physical, emotional, and mental health. So if you want me to break it down, it's basically the activities and behaviors that people undertake as they age, and this reduces the risk of illness, as well as increases their physical, emotional, and mental health. That is what you would put into the name defined section. So this would be something like your introduction paragraph. And uh, you'd also have to include in, include in your in introduction paragraph that there are benefits to individuals and communities. Okay, so if we move on to the describe, we can say something like, it involves making a basic lifestyle realignment that can result in a faster, more enduring recovery from illness and disease, while increasing the quality of life. Some lifestyle behaviors which contribute to healthy aging include healthy diets, consistent exercising, and regular checkups of the GP. So these three things are the descriptions of what allows healthy aging to occur and uh, essentially the lifestyle change, the lifestyle realignment which allows healthy aging to occur. Now the benefits to the individual and community are just clearly listed here. Um, you can read through them in your own time because I don't want to make this video too long but just pause this video and feel free to uh, read them and what I haven't included in this table is the, the explanations of why these things actually occur. It says explain so that means we need to have cause and effect for these advantages for both individuals and the community. So uh, what I'd normally do is I'd have another paragraph after this explaining that, uh, okay, hey, uh, because the lower chances of DAD and, you know, the increased physical, mental, and emotional health, um, these factors, these um, benefits to the individual occur. Just something to um, show the cause and effect. So what happens, like what, what does healthy aging do, and what's the result of healthy aging in the terms of benefits for the individual, and same for the community. Okay, awesome. Let's move on to the next thing. So the next thing is challenge number one. Challenge number one is the increased people living with disease. 
Now, when, when you're naming and defining this part, you can just have a general statement and make sure you try and include trends as well as syllabus words as much as you can. So syllabus terms. So in my in my uh, the name and define for this, I haven't included the introduction. That's up to you guys, and I haven't even included the question. But let's suppose the question was that a growing and aging population, uh, you know, poses many challenges on. Um, on A, the increased people living with disease, B, health services and workforce, and C, carers and volunteers. So we need to show uh, show strategies of how you can reverse these impacts. Firstly, in increased people living with disease, uh, it's apparent that as people become older, there's going to be more people living with chronic disease and disability. Now, what I've done here is I've shortened it down to DAD, so I don't have to always write chronic disease and disability inside the actual exams. And I'm, I'm sure you can do this as well. Just make sure with the teacher before doing it. Anyways, I've said that, and then I've s went on to say a simple statistic. Now, I've said that in 2005, it was estimated that 77% of people were living with a chronic disease. And of these, 95 were over 45. 95% were over 45. What this means is that it just proves my point that there's an increased people there's increased people living with disease due to the Australian aging and growing population. That's what you want to do. Then I go on to say that um, the aging population uh, provide and the increase in the people living with disease provide a great uh, stress on the health services, which result in a gap between the services required and the aging populations who need the services. And I also say that the diseases such as CVD, cancer and diabetes, as I referred to earlier as chronic uh, diseases and disabilities, uh, are what cause this. In the explanation, I talk about a strategy. Now, I'm not going to go and talk through it right now because it's very easy. I've explained it all here. And I also talk about the positives and negatives. Now, you're, th you're probably thinking, why are you talking about positives and negatives in the explanation section? But it's just something that makes it a lot easier for me. I haven't actually had the analyze part, but if I did, that's probably where I'd put it. Um, in this strategy, once you discuss, well, yeah, discuss and analyze these positives and negatives, you basically say the impact that this strategy would have on this challenge. That's the main point of this question. And then straight after, you go into the effectiveness of the strategies. Now, I'm sorry that this um, this video is a bit jumbled, but what you can do is you can just quickly read through my paragraphs, and hopefully they help you. I'll also add them up on Scribed, so you can just quickly look at the actual document instead of looking through this video. Okay. And lastly, I evaluate the effectiveness of the strategy. Now, you might be asking me, why are you doing so much for such a little thing? Well, that's because this question would normally be a 12 marker. This question would consist of 12 marks, and this would require you to actually evaluate strategies to combat these challenges on uh, various things. So then I'll move on now, and I'll go into challenge number two. Challenge number two states um, that the growing and aging populations of Australia will increase the demand for health services and will increase workforce shortages in health services. So, as age, Australia's aged population increases for demand for health services and workers increases since aged most use health services. Sorry for the jumping up there. What I mean to say is that while Australia's aged population is increasing, the demand for the health services and, health services and workers are also increasing. Now, I go on to ex describe this, then I go on to explain, and then I go on to finally evaluation. Just similarly to the other one, I say the same things. In this one, I don't actually have a statistic, but the most important part is having trends. So you can have trends such as, as a population increases, an increase in DAD is also present, therefore a greater demand on the health services. That is actually a trend. You're saying, what, why is this happening, and the result of it. So it's either an increase or a decrease, or stuff like that. That's what you, you should be aiming for. You should be aiming for some trends, some statistics, uh, and overall, that's the main thing that you're supposed to do in this entire core one unit is supposed to compact all these uh, trends and statistics and try and integrate them into your uh, into your answers. The strategy I discuss is just basically something that can combat this challenge. Feel free to read my strategy as well as the advantages and disadvantages and once again I will be putting all of this up in a document form easier for you to read.
Okay, and lastly, we've got the availability of carers and volunteers. Now, carers and volunteers, they provide both informal and formal care. If you guys don't know what they are, um, I'll just quickly describe it to you. Carers and volunteers are anyone such as, uh, for carers, it could be anyone such as a spouse or, uh, you know, your neighbors or your friends, which provide either informal or formal care, whether it's paid or unpaid. They don't necessarily need to get paid, but they just provide care for you. Now, what I'm trying to get across is that since there's an increased population living with uh, di diseases and disabilities, and mainly because they're an aging population, there's going to be a need for carers and volunteers increasing. Okay, so I have one statistic saying that Australians over 55 contribute to approximately 75 billion per annum in unpaid volunteering. Now, that, that is actually a true, t true statistic, and um, what that means is that that proves my point that the availability of carers and volunteers is... Th obviously increasing, like it's uh, the um, demand for carers and volunteers are obviously increasing and because of this the availability is going to decrease. So I've just explained here, I've just described as well, just described what I mean by that and I say that the increase of DAD due to the aging populations being a big factor is decreasing the availability of these carers and volunteers. Adding on, I make sure that I give some examples of carers and volunteers. That's something that you should essentially do just to get that um, dis description of carers and volunteers. And in my strategy, I talk about a way that we could co combat this challenge, as well as advantages and disadvantages associated with the strategy. Lastly, I say the uh, I, I um, state the evaluation of this strategy and whether or not I think it will be successful, and what will stop it from being successful if I don't think it's going to be successful. Now, I know this lesson was very, very messy, and I didn't really go into that much detail, but since I'll put the document up, it will be much more easier to understand, and hopefully this this little thing, this will uh, condense it all into you, uh, condense it all for you. And since I put the document up, it will act as a little summary. Anyways, I hope this lesson helped, and I look forward to making another video next time.